So I want you to picture this, right? Let's say you call up a business and you call them and then you say, I want to talk to John. John's the decision maker, the person who can buy your retainer or your services. And you get through to John by some miracle, you bypass the gatekeeper. And then John says, all right, John's speaking. And then you're there and you're like, what do I say? Right? The video that I'm making today is going to show you how to know what to say and how to communicate what you're selling and your services and what you provide in a really effective way um, on the phone when you're doing cold calls. Okay, so this video, uh, I made a couple of videos a while ago about cold calling and I got this sort of strong demand for this video, which is basically, well, what the hell do I say once I actually get through to someone? So I've, I started my whole agency with cold calling. Um, I basically scaled to six figures, 10K a month, purely with cold calls. It wasn't fun. I don't regret it at all, but it was one of the hardest and worst things I've ever put myself through. But I'm so glad I did because it taught me a lot of verbal dexterity. It taught me how to articulate myself, persuade, convince, and overcome fears, petty fears relevant to rejection and judgment. But let's talk about what to actually say to the decision maker on the cold call and I'm gonna teach you how I see this. I'm not gonna actually give you like a script. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you'll know that we're not about copying and pasting, we're about thinking, right? We're not about monkey see, monkey do, we're about originality. So without further ado, let's hop in. So my name's Charlie. I have a pretty cool journey. I've built two companies, I'm Northflow Consulting, a marketing agency we scaled to seven figures and sold, and I run Imperium Agency, which is a coaching business. Uh, it's a multi seven figure coaching business. We're on the way to eight figures. We basically help agency owners, courses, coaches, consultants, etc., build and scale predictable client acquisitions systems. Don't worry, I've got nothing to sell you. There's no 997 course or webinar in the description. Don't worry. So basically you get through to John and John says that he's there and he's ready to hear your pitch. And then you're sort of like, oh my God, what do I do? It's really important that we approach this with, with two perspectives, right? The first thing we need to talk about is your tone. And the second thing we need to talk about is the content of what you're actually saying. I can tell you now that 80% of your success with cold calling will come with how you actually say what you say, right? And that's kind of goes without saying, although if you don't know that, then you should know that. But really it's more about how you say it than what you say it. The main, I'm not going to go too far into how to have a good tone because you already know how to do it. All human beings know how to sound confident and how to sound enthusiastic because when you talk to someone or when you're explaining something to someone with a level of enthusiasm, it's because you love what you're talking about, right? So when I used to make cold calls, I used to love my business. I used to love the idea of helping people. Obviously it was painful, but that love and that sense of enthusiasm and confidence in myself and my ability to deliver, that manifests into my speech. So like everyone's like, Charlie, how do I manipulate my tone to sound more persuasive? It's like, all you've got to do is go and observe yourself talking to someone in an environment where you're talking about something you love and you genuinely feel confident about. You know, imagine if you were um, trying to sell a winning lottery ticket that you knew was going to win to one of your family members. How would you sell that lottery ticket? How excited would you be? You'd, you'd bust down the door and be like, mum, mum, I can't, I'm going to tell you. Like, you'd, you'd be so excited and so happy. Um, if anyone wants to clip a video of me screaming, mum, please don't do that. Um, but, you, but you get my point, right? So tone isn't something that you can forge. It's something that forges you, if that makes sense. It comes out of you naturally, so we're gonna not talk about that too much. So it comes down to how you see it, right? Because how you build your script will depend on how you see cold calling and how you view prospects and understand psychology. So I'm gonna give you an understanding here. It's very important you realize this, so if you've got pen and paper, write this down. You want to go looking for problems, right? You want to basically, through your script, expose problems in the prospect's business through association, right? Through basically resonance. Right, or resonation, if that's even a word. What I mean by this is your pitch and the way that you speak about your service shouldn't be directly trying to sell it to them. It should be to, trying to basically position it as it as if it can solve a particular problem for the prospect. That makes sense. So let me give you an example, right? Because this gets a bit intangible and strange. Imagine you're a doctor and you're in the US, so you're, you're not on the NHS, you don't get free healthcare, right? So as a doctor, you are responsible for your own income and you run a business. And let's say it's it's flu season, right? And you're trying to drum up some business for your doctor's practice. Like what you would do is, like imagine you're going door to door, um, you're, you specialize in the flu, so you're trying to help people get rid of the flu. What you do is you'd knock on people's doors and the best way to sell your services wouldn't be to say, hi, my name is Dr. Morgan and I can help you get rid of the flu. No, you wouldn't do that because it wouldn't make sense because a lot of people don't have the flu. What you want to do instead is you say, hi, just on the off chance, I'm wondering, are you experience, experiencing like a headache or nausea or like fevers or congestion recently? And then if the person's like, actually, yeah, that I've been experiencing that. It's like, well, brilliant. I've actually got something that could help you overcome those symptoms. Out of those things that I've just explained, what, what, what sort of issues are you having, right? So what we do is we start with the problem. Now, you don't want to stretch that in its entirety to cold calling because it might be a bit weird to, to sort of position it like that. But when I'm writing scripts for cold calling, I'm always doing it centered around problems. So here's an example. So you get through to Johnny. He says, all right, Charlie, like, yeah, what are you doing? First things first is like always, this is the key, always start your cold calls, the pitching decision maker with, 
I'll be honest with you, John, this is a cold call. Would you like to hang up now or give me 30 seconds and then decide? Oh, John, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm trying to sell you something here. Can I have 30 seconds or would you rather I go now? Right? What well, that completely disarms them because it's honesty. And honesty disarms and it also gains trust. So what you'll notice is that like you're probably quite tense and anxious to pitch, and the prospect's also probably quite tense and anxious to find out what your intentions are because you guys don't know each other, it's completely cold. You can bridge this coldness and make it warm just by being honest with your intentions. John, I gotta tell you something, mate. I am a salesperson. You're probably dreading this call, but I wanna be honest with you and tell you I'm trying to sell you something. Have you got 30 seconds or would you rather I leave? Right? It it gives them this option because what happens now is that you create a curiosity you've also made them laugh a little bit and you're very honest so they they've got two options now well leave or all right 30 seconds what's 30 seconds to me like okay i'll give this person the time of day because they were honest with me it invokes reciprocity it's a great little tool to use this is the first thing you want to get their permission to pitch you don't want to go straight into your pitch as soon as you get through and you don't want to start by saying oh john my name is charlie and i am calling from xyz agency and i specialize in facebook ads you're saying my and i like three or four times before you even talked about them so the first thing i always say is i have to use some sort of disarming phrase just to be like can i actually get your permission to pitch you like john i've got something to pitch you do you mind if i go ahead with that or would you rather i just leave you alone you know of course he's going to want you to pitch him because he's so curious he's like w w w w what is it it's like well I'm happy to tell you, do, do you mind if I just take 30 seconds? Okay, yeah, fine. What that does is like in their mind, psychologically, when they've agreed to be pitched, they're far more receptive to the pitch because they've pre-agreed to the notion of it. So when you pre-agree to the notion of someone doing something, you're more likely to believe them or understand them or actually engage with them and listen to them. I hear people doing cold call pitches that are like two minutes long without the prospect permission. The other secret to the, the 30 second thing is it gives the prospect this sense of like, I know it's 30 seconds. If you're not clear with how long it's gonna take, then the prospect will be anxious and jumpy to get off the call because they don't know how long you're gonna talk for. But when you set a serious frame in mind for exactly how long the call will be, then you'll find they're more receptive. It's kind of like if you're watching a YouTube video and you didn't know how long it was. You don't know what you're in for. You don't know how long you've got to sit there for. You don't know how long it's gonna take for the person to arrive at the point. So you're like, okay, I don't know. But with this video, you can see how long it is. So you know that will influence your decision to watch it. Once you've got their permission, we want to seek problems. And we want to do this in one of two ways. You can push or you can pull. Push is where you already assume they face the problems and you say you can solve them. Pull is where you don't assume they have the problems, but you tell them that you help people who potentially have their problems solve them. So push is where you're more direct. It's like, okay, John, well, listen, I've got a solution for a series of problems. This problem, this problem, and this problem, and this problem. We're very good at solving this problem and this problem, and we solve this problem, this problem, blah, blah, blah. Basically, you just talk about the problems. Once you get to the point where you've explained what the problems are, you don't really talk about yourself. You just talk about the fact that you can solve it. So you don't want to talk about, you never mention the words marketing or agency or SMA or like, you know, Facebook ads or YouTube ads or anything. You keep the conversation solely around the, the problems. So you're not really pitching them your services in the first place. What you're actually pitching them is the potential solution to a pro problem they may have. So I would say something like, so listen, John, I've got 30 seconds here. I'm going to keep it brief. I'm going to take a guess and hazard a guess to say that you might be facing one of these three problems. A lack of leads in your business resulting in not enough people actually walking through your door. Enough leads, but people coming through aren't actually qualified and don't really have any motivation to buy. Or perhaps it's actually something to do with the conversion. Maybe you've got a sales team, they're not motivated to sell. I solve those three problems and I've been solving those three problems for years for loads of different gyms. Do you by any chance have any of those problems? And then he's like, yes, right? Or like, well, yeah, I mean the, the lead one, like basically you're trying to resonate with them. You're trying to lay out some vague blanket sort of understanding empathy of their situation using your understanding of your niche and your research of the niche, presenting it to them and then saying, does that resonate with you at all? Like I, I do this, 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 and this. And this is what I do. I'm very good at it. Don't suppose that resonates with you. We're not actually saying like, oh, like I want to do your marketing. Do you want to have a discovery call? It's just like, here's what I do. Here are the problems I solve. Any chance you got them, right? Off the back of that, that's more of a push approach. A pull approach is you explain briefly about what you do. And then before they can answer, you actually ask them like what problems they're having in their business. Like if, if, you, if you could wave a magic wand right now, John, and solve one problem relevant to what I just said, what would that problem be? So if you sort of explain that you do like marketing and lead gen and stuff, but you never explain marketing and lead gen because everyone like switches off when they hear that, then that's how it works. So I know this video isn't a direct script and this video is basically geared towards you thinking because I can tell you the secret to client acquisition, especially cold client acquisition, is authenticity and originality. It's kind of like if you're watching my YouTube videos and my YouTube videos are the same, same as everybody else's, you're probably not going to watch because you can get it elsewhere. Originality, authenticity is the best, which is why these videos are designed to basically help you think, right? I don't want to 
give you an exact script because then it strips you of learning, right? So I always used to watch Star Wars and you see Luke Skywalker and Yoda, right? And Yoda will give Luke this strange, not that I'm Yoda, but same scenario applies, right? Mentor, mentee. Yoda will give Luke this strange, vague idea or message and Luke has to flesh that out in his own way. And it's through fleshing out that he learns and becomes the man that Yoda intended him to be. If Yoda just gave him all the answers, Luke wouldn't have to figure them out. And it's, it's by figuring things out for yourself that you grow and develop and create systems that are unique to you and actually work. So that's basically the reasoning behind this video. And I wanted to just give you some ideas relevant to cold calling and basically focusing on the problem, making sure you get their permission, don't keep your pitch like too long. It shouldn't be more than like 30 seconds. And you know, then you just start conversing with the prospect and doing some discovery basically after the back of that. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. I mean, I've made, I don't know how many cold calls I've made, too many to count basically, like a hundred thousand, probably more than that, hundreds of thousands, which is quite a strange thing to think about. But anyways, I hope it was useful for you. If you like the video, like it because when you like a video on YouTube like this, it helps other people who are facing the problem you're facing so you can alleviate the pain of other people in your situation just by pressing a single button. Pretty good thing to do. Um, also comment any video ideas you have or anything else you want me to clarify on cold calling. I understand this video is quite vague and it's not exactly tangible, but if there's anything else I can help you with, just drop a comment below and also subscribe because, well, it helps me help you, but you don't have to subscribe. If you are a marketing agency owner or a coach or consultant and you are struggling with client acquisition, click the first link in the description. You don't have to click it. It's just a video of me explaining how we can solve that problem for you. Um, notice how I didn't pitch you anything except from start with the problem, right? It's, philosophy tangles into everything that we do. So yeah, click that link if you want to get more clients. If you don't, I don't really care. It's fine. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.